Hey, this week we are continuing our series called The Victory in Jesus, The Regal Results of the Resurrection. And what we're talking about are the benefits that believers gain through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we've looked at the new birth, which is first, of course. That is <clears throat> the receiving of God's saving grace uh, by faith and being born again uh, by the work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the second thing we looked at was justification. Uh, what does it mean to be justified, to be, to be declared innocent, the law court term, Dikaosune, uh, which means to declare innocent. It's a declaration of one's condition in the court. The court is found in your favor. And that, of course, is tied with uh, tzedakah in Hebrew, which is translated righteousness, but which is always tied to covenant, the covenant of God, the covenant with Abraham. Abraham believed God's promise that he would be the father of many nations and have these descendants that you couldn't count as the stars. And then he makes his covenant with him. He reckoned to him as righteousness. This, this covenant, being right with God, it is not a moral virtue. It is not a moral condition. It, is, it has really nothing to do with that. It has our standing with God to be covenant. Uh, covenant God, used of God, his covenant faithfulness when used of people being in that right condition with God, um, which is by faith. Believing God's promise by faith, being that's the covenant badge. And it still is the covenant badge, faith, not uh, circumcision, because Abraham uh, was considered in that covenant before circumcision. That takes place chapters later. Anyway, that we've looked at those two. This week we're looking at the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, are we covering everything that the Spirit does? No. What we're looking at primarily is the result because of the resurrection <clears throat> And because of the new birth, because of the declaration of the court is found in our favor, the end time judgment brought forward, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, um, because we are declared to be uh, innocent, because we are because Christ is in it, innocent and we are found in him, so we're declared innocent as well. And so uh, the, the, the bondage to sin and death is broken, and we remember the we're talking about this new exodus experience that, that we're on. And so as we go through that, <clears throat> we find today the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, again, tabernacle language, exodus language is being used, the indwelling, the tabernacling, the dwelling of God's presence, the Shekinah glory, uh, the tabernacle, and the, the, the leading uh, by day and night by the pillar of fire, fire and the cloud by uh, the cloud by night, the fire, the pillar of fire by day, that kind of thing, all tabernacle and temple language, um, the, the presence of God, the divine presence of God, of the Holy Spirit, and the new temple being the people of God, Jew and Gentile brought together, and the indwelling of the Spirit. So that temple is there uh, again. Now, that's where we started yesterday. Today we're looking at verses 11, uh, 12, and 13. And really, you could have put 11 with yesterday's, but I broke it up so that I have three days to cover. Uh, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, tabernacles in you, he who raised Christ Jesus, there are a couple of terms, from the dead, will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Let's stop right there and just talk about it. If the spirit, it, it, logically it flows quite well. If the spirit, of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit, right? If the Holy Spirit has taken up residence in you, is the temple, your body's the temple, the Spirit of God is dwelling there, the divine presence is dwelling there. If that is true, it's a conditional statement, if that is true, he who raised God, who raised Christ Jesus, whereas before in chapter 6 it is Jesus, here it is Christ Jesus, Christos Jesus. Why, why using both? Uh, or in the Hebrew, it would be Mashiach uh, Yeshua. Uh, why, why? Well, one of them, the royal term, the, the term of Messiah, the anointed one, the seed of David, uh, because he is the king, because he is the anointed one, the Messiah, uh, Israel's representative, what is true of him is true of Israel. And then Jesus, Yeshua, uh, Yahweh is salvation or Yahweh saves. Um, that one is used because he is the person who accomplishes this. 
So one is a title, one is the person of Jesus, the name uh, Yeshua. Uh, his name embodies what he does. Yahweh through him saves. And so you have both of those that are there. And God is the one who has raised Christ Jesus from the dead, will also give life to your mortal bodies, these bodies that are going to die. We talked about that yesterday. The absolute certainty, these bodies are going to die through his spirit who dwells in you. So it is through the age of God is the one who does the work. God is the one who saves. God is the one who, um, uh, uh, who justifies. God is the one who gives the Holy Spirit. God is the one who raises through the agency of the Holy Spirit. So you have this, all of this Trinity talk that's being talked about. The word Trinity is not used, but you obviously have three parts, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit that are involved in this saving work. Um, each person of the Trinity accomplishing certain aspects of that. Jesus, who is both the person and the Messiah and the Son of God, uh, the fullness of deity dwelling in him, uh, is the one who pays the price on the cross. We looked at that uh, where sin is drawn onto him and there it is dealt with in his death because sin is Sin requires death, and death takes place, and, and Jesus experienced that for us. I mean, to death in the sense of being separated, that, that death thing. Um, and then there is the resurrection that is accomplished by God but through Jesus Christ, declared to be his son in power and glory because of that. That doesn't make him his son. He's already his son. But it's declared to everyone, this resurrection declares to everyone that the cross uh, death is defeated because he is alive and is vindicated in the sense that he is God's son uh, and the, the, the end time judgment is declared in him as innocent and anyone who is in him is found innocent. So end time judgment is brought forward into that and then whatever happens after that, you have the new creation kicked off. God has declared the judgment. Those who are in Christ Jesus are declared innocent as well. And so the Holy Spirit will give life to these bodies. Now, that's speaking of our resurrection, believers' resurrection. We're going to have new bodies, glorified bodies, and we talked about that. God will accomplish that, that through the agency of the Holy Spirit, who is dwelling, present tense, who is continually dwelling within each and every believer. Um, and so that's the first thing. And, and that just follows, doesn't it? In order to be saved, you must have the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't belong to Jesus Christ. You're not in him, and therefore the resurrection does not, uh, the de declaration of innocence doesn't apply to you. Justification doesn't apply to you. Salvation doesn't apply to you. Not until you receive the grace of God by faith, as Abraham did. Then it would be reckoned as righteousness, and then you are declared innocent because you are in Christ. You have believed in Jesus Christ, believed in God, the one who raised him from the dead, that kind of stuff. And now in verse 12, so then, because of this, so then, brethren, brothers and sisters, we are under obligation not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. All right, so there again, no longer do we live out the fleshly desires and lusts and passions that have the stench of death upon them. No longer are we driven by these passions and these desires. No longer are we under the power of the flesh, whereas we have no choice before we're saved. Now, the Spirit of God brings life to us, and we bear fruit that is befitting of that fruit, spiritual fruit. That, and In other words, our character is different. Our nature is different because of that new birth, because we're declared innocent, because we're found in Christ, and because the Spirit dwells in us. Now we are authentically human being, and now we can live out our purpose, our vocation, our creation purpose, if you will, of being authentically human, of being God's representatives, of bearing His image into the world and showing forth love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control, the fruit of the Spirit that is produced in us. Those things are life-giving. The other things that we do in the flesh are destructive, 
Um, does it mean that no good thing is done? Of course not. That's not what he means. Of course we're in this body, and this is where we live out this new creation right now. One day when we have new resurrection bodies, we'll live it out in the new creation, and we'll see things and smell things and hear things and taste things you know, that we have never imagined before. And I look so forward to that. We experience that now, really, because we have the Spirit of God dwelling in us, enabling us to live life and to live it as it should be lived in love and in thankfulness and in the the grace of God to live that out um, then then we see that happening right now but so because we are believers and because the spirit dwells in us we live differently we no longer are uh, under obligation we are no longer enslaved by these fleshly desires and passions and so forth that drive us to destruction and have the stink of death as N.T. Wright calls it uh, upon them uh, rather rather because he says if you're living according to the flesh you're bound to die but on the other hand if by the spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body you will live so in other words, we are to put to death these things. We're not to, uh, and we're enabled to do that by the power of the Holy Spirit. Do we always successfully overcome those uh, lascivious passions and desires of the flesh? Um, no, we don't. Uh, do we still do destructive things? Do we still have bad habits? Do we still? Yes, we do. But, but. We have the power because of the Holy Spirit indwelling us to say no. We don't have to sin. We don't have to do those things. We don't have to run after selfish desires uh, that satisfy our lust. We don't have to do that. And lust, and there, I'm not using that as a sexual term. I'm using that as those things that we, uh, that we say no to God and yes to self. And I give me, give me, give me. I want it, I want it, I want it. That kind of thing. Um, we no longer are bound by that. We are not obligated to the flesh. We are, on the other hand, obligated to the Spirit who dwells in us. We're obligated to God to live out this new life by the agency of the Holy Spirit who lives in us, looking forward to the fullness of our resurrection and the new creation and all of that. We live that out now by putting to death those deeds that lead to destruction and corruption and contamination, selfishness, ego, all of that stuff, hatred, malice, uh, mean-spiritedness, uh, divisiveness, all of that, that reveals a selfish, fearful, anxious being rather than a human being who is sure and confident and certain that God is working things out um, for his good pleasure and that, that he is working that out even today in our midst as we live out this new creation by the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, that's at what we live presently. We're going to see some more tomorrow about the new Exodus and how the Spirit leads us, and we'll get into that. Hey, listen, that's all we've got for today. I pray that you know the blessing of God. I pray you know the new life that comes in the Spirit, and I pray that you are putting to death the deeds that corrupt and contaminate and destroy, and those things that make us feel guilty, and those things that make oh, I can't believe I did that. Put those things to death. Kill those things. Unfortunately, it's a daily thing. We have to do it daily because they re rear their ugly heads every day. And the closer we walk by the power of the Spirit with Jesus Christ, the less they attack us, the less, you know, we fall to those things. So we're going to stay in the Word, stay in prayer, be filled with the Spirit each and every day, put on the armor of God, and know, know this, yes, number one, that I love you, but more importantly, God loves you. And what has He done? He's given His Son, you might have eternal life, forgiveness of sin, and yes, joy indescribable right here and right now. And that's experienced when we live out the vocation that we have in the Spirit of God who lives in us, tabernacles with us, and empowers us to overcome the passions of the flesh and to live out the vocation that God has given us, bearing His image into the world. Well, listen, I pray God's blessings on you. Um, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Till then, God bless you. See you tomorrow.